If you don't know what a condition is that they have, yes, have a look, look it up. But don't go down the rabbit hole of finding out all about it. Just know what it is because chances are by the time your client gets to you, they know more about their illness than their specialist. They know more about their illness than you could know in a lifetime. And we're working around the other things and the other problems that are related to that. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists, and practitioners responding directly to the needs of a practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business, something clinical, you'll get the variety you need to enjoy and stay motivated and practice. So thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast for our episodes. If you'd like more support, get in contact, and I look forward to working with you soon. Hello everyone, welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. I thought we'd have a short series on the consults themselves. This is off the back of Finding Your Flow, the webinar that I run bi-yearly and I've run it relatively recently. We're also talking about this coming up in the Graduate Mastery Program because we all run consults differently, don't we? People who are listening, your naturopath or nutritionist or herbalist, you might be a massage therapist, you might be a coach. We all have our own modalities and we're all doing things differently and yet the same. We all are offering our clients around about an hour for the first consult. Now, when we were in college, that had to be an hour and a half for me all those years ago and for many of you far more recently because there had to be enough time for discussion. There had to be enough time to get the lecturer into or the clinic supervisor into the room to go through what needed to be gone through to ask the questions about the client for the lecturer to sit and watch you conduct your consult. So there were all of these things that had to be taken into account in college and I don't really see any other way of being in college and having that person sit in with you, having the other colleagues, your other students in with you as well, your P2s, There is, I don't really see any other way that college can do it, but it doesn't work for the outside world because when we see our clients in the outside world, we're by ourselves, number one. That's why I have the next level program so that people can talk about their clients. But aside from that, we are on our own. You're in that room by yourself and it's up to you to figure out what you're going to do with that client and how the systems are going to run, how you're going to work with them and what you're going to do with them going forward. Now, I thought this little run of podcasts, we'd start right at the beginning. And today I talk about the pre-consult, that is before we see them. So I've talked a lot about systems. So I don't know if I'll be repeating myself or not, but it shouldn't be. There are on my website, www.geraldineheadley.com. You will find, and you do have to put the dub 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 in the front apparently. But you will find on there some system analysis downloads, which are really useful. I can put it in the podcast one. There is the podcast. There's a link to downloads for the podcast as well on the website um, for previous podcasts. And I'll put the link in there as well. So when we think about we're seeing our client, we're about to see our client. And when we're starting out in practice, that's really daunting. That's really scary. And we start to think about them too much. We start to go over things well in advance of seeing them. And I see in the Facebook group, Strictly Education and Support and Strictly Practitioners, I will see in there people saying, I've got someone coming to see me and they've got this, that and the other wrong. Does anybody know anything about that? Now, number one, you can, of course, just Google the problems. But number two, how long are you spending going over what they've told you? Because it might be something totally different when they get in the door. They might say they've got anemia. And so you're like, oh, which iron does everybody else think is really good? And then they get, you found an iron that you think is going to be really good for this anemic patient. And they walk in the door and they say, I'm vegan. And you're the iron that you've chosen isn't vegan. And you don't know about veganism. And they hadn't written that on their intake form. And now you've got to start at the beginning anyway. So Over the years, I have come to realize that being too prepped, being too ready is really unhelpful. So I don't prep. I spend 10 minutes looking literally tops, 10 minutes prepping before I see a client. So in the past, 
I have, and I think you probably have heard this story before, my rosacea client. If you haven't, here we go. Very quickly on my rosacea client. This was a long, long, long time ago, 16 years, something like that. And I'd seen this lady three times and then she phoned me because back in the day we had to phone each other to cancel. And she phoned me to cancel her next appointment. And I said, why are you canceling? She said, we haven't done anything for me. I was like, oh, well, we'd done a lot of things, right? We'd, but I can't remember what that, there were literally five things because on the phone call, I said, but you know, we've got your blood pressure down. She's like, oh, yes, yes. And I said, well, you know, we've sorted out your gut. I said, yeah, well, yes, yes, yes. And then I was like, but we've done this. And she's like, well, yes, yes, we've done this. And I remember it was like five things because I counted them off on my hand. I'd actually sort of collapsed. I was at home and I collapsed onto my bed going, but I've done this and I've done that and I've done, why are you firing me? And we got to the end and I literally had five fingers up on my hand as I'd counted them off. And I was like, but I've done all these things. And she said, yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, you have helped me and you have done all those things. Thank you very much. However, you haven't solved my rosacea. Now, if I hadn't spent all that time prepping prior to seeing her, seeing all of her problems listed out and my delving deeply into each of those problems, I would have listened better in the consult and heard her and understood what she was saying. And that was that rosacea was her biggest problem. Now, we all know rosacea is a nightmare to get rid of. Really, really hard. And then it's multifactorial. And of course, high blood pressure is part of it. Bad guts is part of it. There are all of these other things related to rosacea. Now, if I'd been listening properly in the consult, rather than having done a load of pre-prep before she came, I would have heard her repeatedly saying the word rosacea and I would have understood that was her biggest goal, not the other things that I thought were big goals. Yes, we don't want someone with high blood pressure. That's the last thing we want. But she can't see that as a problem. What she sees is the resultant rosacea. But it's going to take a long time and it's multifactorial. As we've said, you'll want creams on the face as well as things fixing up the body. And so I'd done these things, but I hadn't solved what she wanted. And that was her goal. So if we spend a lot of time prepping before they come, like in that case, we will miss the goal. In another case I had, I used to, back in the day, I did fertility work as well, simply because I had young children. I would see lots of babies, so it's all sort of in the realm. And there weren't that many fertility gurus out there. Now there's lots. As soon as there started being lots, I was like, I don't have to do this anymore. Phew, not really, wasn't really my area of interest. It was something I'd ended up doing more than anything else. But I had this lady, she phoned and she had fertility issues. And so I did a load of pre-prep before I saw her. And then 24 hours before her appointment, she phoned and cancelled. I've found a new doctor. I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to go and see him. Okay, great. So I've done all this work that I didn't need to do. I've wasted my time and you're going to see somebody else. You found a new doctor and that's it. So you're cancelling me. Fabulous for her. And that's, she's made those decisions. Good on her, her choice. But I foolishly made the choice to spend hours researching the things that she told me. So now I don't do big discovery calls. I do short discovery calls. I let them talk about the issues, but I don't do a load of delving into it. I don't spend hours and hours before I see them because they're not paying me for those hours prior. They're paying that for me for my time after. So that 10 minutes, so I use Acuity Scheduling and you don't have to use that at all. It just happens to be the one that I use. There's all sorts of other schedulers. And if you're using a dedicated system for your clients like Halaxy or Simple Clinic or Practice Better or whatever it might be, then you have an intake form. You have proper intake forms and they can fill those out. Whereas I was using Acuity and Halaxy, but of course I mentor as well. So I need a booking calendar that can take more than one system or one type of client. So they fill out their Acuity form. I download it. Then I upload it to Halaxy. What's downloading and uploading, I'm reading it. And then I put the relevant pieces of information from that onto my client information form. So I just cut it across and then I see them. So I've literally done that before I see them. So I'm ready to go before. If I've got a row, a long line of clients ahead, then back in the day, I would get all the brown files out and I stack them all up upside down in the order that I'm seeing those clients. So I just take the one off the top, turn it over. So this confidentiality was maintained. I'd open it up. I'd see that client. I would actually put that in the drawer when they were done. Next one, turn it over, off I go. So there'd be almost empty ones there because they had the empty paperwork for me then to fill out. It's the same thing with the Halaxy. I've got it all there. That person is ready to go. I've put their name, their date of birth and their emergency contact details and any allergies on the front page. And I've opened up the 
two forms that I like to use in there and I have my acuity form uploaded to there and it's waiting queued for when I see them. Okay, because then I find out what they want me to work on, what their goals are and how important these things are to them. I can work on the other stuff as we're going, but if it's a symptom of a problem, then yeah, I'm going to be explaining to them that this is a symptom. So I recently saw someone, the mother had said that she was very anxious and this was all relatively new. And so she would, they were suggesting that she go on antidepressants, but she didn't think that was right for her. She should just get on with it. And I said, yeah, it doesn't work like that. In our age group, you just got on with it. But younger people, it's a very different lifestyle, very different way of life to what we grew up in. And so it's just different. And we have to respect that. We have to figure out what's going on. And I said, well, what are her guts like? And to discover that they all had she couldn't remember the name of it at the time, and I'm not going to break any confidentiality, but they all had a parasitic bug from where they were from. And I was like, okay, well, why don't we start working on her guts first? So I didn't say this to the mother. She's like, yeah, sure, I'll see it, see how we go, see what's happening. She was just like, tell her she just has to get on with it. I'm like, yeah, well, no, won't be what I'll be saying, but yep, okay. And saw her, asked about her guts. Of course, her guts are really bad. So I'm like, okay, well, let's just start at the beginning and maybe we can sort out your guts. And with the gut-brain connection, we will have some changes in the brain. And meanwhile, here's some things to help you sleep and symptom management for the anxiety. We sort out the guts. I speak to her. I'm not taking any of the anxiety stuff. That was one tablet at bedtime. Actually, I'm not taking any of that. I don't need it. I feel calm now. And of course, we had a gut-brain connection issue here. And so once I'd explained to her the gut-brain connection and how that was affecting her anxiety and her moods, and if we could sort that out and see if that was what the problem was, see if that would make the significant change that we needed, and meanwhile work on some of the symptoms that she had and see if those worked, and maybe she wouldn't need the antidepressant that was being recommended that she had the prescription for that she'd chosen at this point not to fill. And let's do a little bit of work and it's going to take a month to see how we go. And we achieved that success. We achieved the reduction in her anxiety by the change in her gut. But there was an explanation, but there was seeing her. There was finding out about her gut. I could have taken it on face value that it was all anxiety and it was all in her mind, blah, blah, like her mother had said, but I didn't. So I hadn't done all that pre-work about anxiety that I might have done in the past on what the mother had told me rather than waiting to see university student, not a young child, but waiting until I saw the young adult, her daughter, and getting the full discussion with her, getting the full information and then being able to make those decisions. So before we see a client, don't overdo it. Those are my three there where, well, my two where I did lots of pre-work, disaster, and the one where I didn't do the pre-work, I made sure I didn't. And when I sat down, there was the absolute realization that if I had done pre-work, I would have gone down the rabbit hole and the wrong rabbit hole. I would have got to the dead end rather than coming out in the new luscious carrot patch or in Mr. McGregor's garden. So those are just a couple of my examples to make sure that when you think, how much pre-work do I need to do with this client and realize that it's actually very little. If you don't know what a condition is that they have, yes, have a look, look it up, but don't go down the rabbit hole of finding out all about it. Just know what it is because chances are by the time your client gets to you, they know more about their illness than their specialist. They know more about their illness than you could know in a lifetime. And we're working around the other things and the other problems that are related to that. So the questions for you, how much pre-work do you do? How can you change it? How can you reduce it? How can you make it easier on yourself? All right. Next time, I'm going to talk about paperwork. So I look forward to seeing you on the next podcast. If you've made it all the way to the end, don't forget, rate and review because it really supports me and we all like to support each other in our businesses. And I'll look forward to catching up with you soon. See ya. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning, and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.